I'm Dr. Richard Gere. I'm a surgical oncologist. I'm the physician chief of surgical oncology at Sarah Cannon. BRCA came out of testing looking for genetic um, issues related to breast cancer. We knew that we had a number of women in the country that had breast cancer, their mother had breast cancer, grandmother had breast cancer, and died at young ages. And it really led us to try to figure out what, what was a genetic alteration. And so they found this gene is mutated in about 10% of women who have breast cancer. So it's a mutated gene, it's an inherited gene, can come from either the father or the mother, either side. Um, and so uh, depends on who inherits it, it's about a 50% chance it can be inherited. There's different types of specifically BRCA1 and BRCA2 that are there, uh, but generally with the genetic testing that's done, we can decide which one it is. And that will determine your risk of developing breast cancer in your lifetime if you test positive for BRCA1 or BRCA2. Basically, BRCA1 is a much is a higher incidence of breast cancer in terms of that. So if you look at women who are BRCA1 positive, their risk of developing breast cancer by the age of 80 is about 80%. Uh, to develop ovarian cancer is about 24% oh, in some series. Some people say about 40% uh, in terms of that. If you look at BRCA2 genes, um, their incidence of breast cancer is about 45%, ovarian about 11%. So much higher than the average person for risk for breast cancer. So when every patient we see that comes in with, with a breast cancer diagnosis, uh, we ask about family history. And so we ask about how many family members they had. Um, for example, um, we look at both sides of the family. It's actually it's not just one side or the other. So it's a first, second, or third degree relative from the same side of the family. Anyone that has in their family, I mean, a single breast cancer alone, mother with breast cancer with no one else is probably not going to raise the level that you're going to consider doing testing. But two patients, two people that have breast cancer on the same side of the family, you know, mother, uh, maternal aunt, uh, maternal aunt, something like that would maybe start to raise that possibility. And really then gets into a genetics assessment and then genetics counseling about are they appropriate to get tested for this gene. The harder decision to make is that when you have a patient um, whose mother had breast cancer at say 45 years of age and tests and finds out to be positive for BRCA and say she's 25 years of age at this point in time. So when's appropriate for her to consider the discussion about prophylactic mastectomy or prophylactic oophorectomy in terms of treatment? At age 25 she should probably have breast self exams, a clinical breast exam probably starting at that age, mammograms and MRI scanning uh, annually done to look for anything that's abnormal and then really a significant discussion about the role of mastectomy, the role of oophorectomy. Oftentimes these are in childbearing years, they haven't had children yet, so the thought is is that if that's a thought to have that done and probably think about having an operation done you know somewhere by 35. So again prophylactic mastectomy will definitely decrease your risk of breast cancer by 90 percent. Prophylactic oophorectomy will decrease it by between 80 to 95 percent as well. So it's it's not the be-all end-all. It's not if you have it done you're never going to have a problem but the likelihood is much smaller and again still it's important to know that you still need to be followed over time because there is even there's still going to be breast tissue left behind even after prophylactic mastectomy ophorectomy as well, so it was something we need to follow as well over time. I think we're now just wrapping our arms around what a lot of these things mean when people develop breast cancer. We certainly know with prophylactic mastectomy and ophorectomy we're saving lives, there's no doubt about that. Um, the thing is it does require some discussion um, with your physician, with your probably medical oncologist as well, plastic surgeon about uh, and genetics counselor primarily about what this means for you and particularly for your family as you go forward. It has been wonderful that we've been able to actually find this gene, that we can action this gene, that we can know that we can help women and prevent this disease. Uh, but in going forward I think it's going to be part of our breast cancer conversation that we're going to continue to have.